That is a remarkable finish. Burke, Burke goes for the corner and Leah Burke's in. And it's Tamsin Renew. The pass from Harley Dodd. And this could be the first goal of the game because London are going to get them and touch down. He's gone for the same ball and he's gone. Oh, beautiful. They might score the winner. And North Wales have another. Brings it up to the line, drops it off to Hazard who reaches through. Well, you're very welcome to the Sportsman Rugby League. Our first steps on the road to Wembley today. We'll be under the arch in June, but for now we are in Wigan for Oral St. James versus Hairsfinch in the first round of the Betfred Challenge Cup. And alongside me, a man who has lifted that famous trophy, Kyle Amor. Kyle, first game of the season, first game of the Challenge Cup. Oral St. James, a really healthy crowd building up around us. It doesn't get much better than this, does it? No, it certainly doesn't, Lewis. Good afternoon to you and everybody who's tuning in at home as well. This is where the dream of Wembley starts, isn't it? Right on these very fields right in front of us and, you know, these two sides. Although, in all probability, they won't go on to feature in that final come later in the year. But for them and the club and the fans, supporters, young and old, it's so important that, that we, we get a good game here this afternoon. Well, two teams coming into this, Oral St. James with their own proud history in this competition, making it to the third round in 2023, and Hairs Finch making their Betfred Challenge Cup debut, and we'll run you through the team, starting off with the home side, Oral St. James start with Sam Burns at fullback, Jack Gallagher, Liam McLaughlin, Callum Taylor, Lewis Rowe make up the three quarters with James Causey and Jack McHugh in the halves. The front row of Tom Whittle, Nathan Mortars, Kyle Ciani. They're backed up with Nathan Ellis, Ben Tordorf and Bradley Callan completing the pack and coming off the interchange bench for the home side this afternoon. Jack Davies, Bradley Kelk, Adam Ball and Sean Finlow. And for the visitors, Hairs Finch this afternoon, they line up with Nathan Goodwin at fullback, Danny Large and Josh Ainsworth, joined by Rob Gormley and Niall Allen in the back line, Aaron Lynch and Matty Ross are the halves, Brad Davies, Brad Davies sorry, Ryan Briggs and Charlie Wilson, the captain, make up the front row with Jordan Morris, Matty Norton and Danny Lynch at loose forward. And on the interchange bench for the visitors, Chris Clayton, Michael Fields, Darren Wilson and Fallon Kellen, Kelly Duffy. Kyle, there's the two teams. Yeah. Two teams that were very, very close to each other in the league last year, second and third, respectively, in the Northwest Premier Division, with Oral going on to win the grand final for the third time in a row. This should be an absolute cracker. There's not much between these two sides at all, historically, as our match officials lead us out. There it is, the Bet Fred. Challenge Cup trophy, standing proud here at Oral St. James. The excitement begins, the race to Wembley begins, but 80 minutes of fantastic rugby league on the menu this afternoon. Yeah, certainly, Lewis. And we can see the crowd as the players enter the field now. You know, it's like I mentioned earlier on how important these cup ties are for them. And speaking to a couple of people within inside Oral St. James is, you know, this game can generate something between, you know, nine, 12 grand for them. So it goes a long, long way to, to keeping everything ticking over throughout the rest of this season. But, you know, certainly cannot wait and look forward to this one. Yeah, a real special occasion feeling to this one. We've got an electric scoreboard over on that far side. We've got a drum. We've got plenty of people around us. Our commentary position is virtually in the Oral St. James <laughs> dugout. We'll do our best to keep you abreast of what's happening to our left-hand side as the two teams line up. There's something very, very special about this grassroots level of rugby league showing itself on the Challenge Cup, isn't there, Carl? Yeah, certainly. You know, keep your eyes out as well. Just looking through those team sheets, you know, Jack McHugh, the son of Sean, the coach at Oral St. James, is a lot of responsibility on his shoulders when these two sides met in that playoff game, that semi-final. Oral were down 22-10 inside of 10 minutes left to play and Jack McHugh stood up and be counted two breaks that led to tries which overturned that game and gone on to see Oral progress through to that grand final, winning that game 24-22. So a lot of responsibility on the number seven for Oral. Keep your eye out on the two back rowers as well for Hares, Finch and Norton and Morris, two huge, huge athletes. It'll cause damage if they can get anywhere near this St. James's line. 
yeah, as you mentioned, a replay this of that Northwest Premier Division semi final from last season. And of course, you've got a club from Wigan and a club from St. Helens, so that means a little bit as well, Kyle, as you well know. <laughs> There's always a bit of needle in those games, let me tell you that. So here we go Betfred Challenge Cup round one action, live and exclusive here on the Sportsman. We're underway. Oral kicking off. Here's Finch. We'll get first taste of the football and we'll see who can make the early strides in this game. So here's Finch looking to go up that right channel for the time being, just keeping it tight as you'd expect in these early exchanges, but there's an offload. They don't get too many extra metres for their troubles, but they keep the ball in hand. Now they look again out to this left-hand side, keeping it nice and tight up the middle for the time being. Kyle, how important will it be? Because it's not just the first round, it's the first game of the season. It's going to be very important to just work their way into this game, get a feel for it and, uh, and get themselves settled, isn't it? You're absolutely right. You know, just getting through the set. And that'll help. And that is a real coach killer. On one of the final players of the set, Oral just jumping the gun, giving away a penalty. So straight away, Harris Finch given an opportunity to get some early field position. Just a bit too keen, perhaps a bit excited to try and dominate their opposite number early on in those tackles, but it was late in the set and give away a penalty and it'll be Hayes Finch that start about 35 metres away from Oral's line. So they bring it up through the middle. Brad Davies with that carry. Do a lot of big minutes, Will Davies, as we move the ball from right to left. It's a short pass on the back rower there. And Morris, oh, he just the deck. yeah, he just loses the ball. But the shape was all there. And just the execution, of perhaps a lack of skill, just at the very end. See Morris goes right into the line. It's a lovely short pass, but he just can't hold on to it. Good enthusiastic line speed, as you'd expect in these early right, guys, stages the from Oral. The They'll be looking, as we mentioned earlier, to recreate some of their challenge cut form from last season, which saw them get all the way through to the third round. Now they come off this scrum, and we get to see what they can do with the ball for the first time this afternoon. Go. That's 30. So again, similar to Ayers Finch, keeping it nice and tight in the middle in these early exchanges. I'm sure both coaches, Carl, have spoken about completion rates very early on in this game. Yeah, particularly for Hayes Finch. You know, if one thing that they were guilty of last year was perhaps overplaying, particularly coming out of yardage. So for them, they will be looking to complete early on and keep your eyes out on this man here, Tom Whittle. Him and Kaisiani, the two bookends, they'll do big minutes. Both spent time at St. Helens Academy. Very good players at this level. Siani now, he drives the ball forward and gets some good field position as well. Yeah, there's some big size in those middle units. Oh, and that just... was the last, but there's an error at the play of the ball. Yeah. So just... they will turn it over exactly on the halfway line. And both teams just showing perhaps a little bit of early yeah, season rustiness in his early exchange. Just see that he plays the ball correctly, and it's just a... Mm. Right, guys. Now then, I think they may have been hard done to there. Can't really see an error within that. But it doesn't matter. Play on. It is Hairs Finch with the ball just inside the oral half. They come over to this right hand side. It's the captain Wilson. Ryan Briggs at dummy half. He will get the ball from the play again. He comes out to Matty Ross at half back. Now they look for a little bit of shape, but there's another error. Zero. There's a swing arm as Goodwin. well there from Nathan Goodwin. He loses the ball. He works hard from marker there. Does really well for his side. Trying to make up for that error. Just a lax in concentration, that one. He just snatched at the ball and, and Siani now rolls forward. Already made some good metres and some big carries. Has the oral middle as they look now to the left-hand side. Coming back up the middle again. It's good work defensively there from Norton. Just getting in the face. And now we come out to this right edge. Mortars at dummy half. Brad Callard there, Calland with the carry. He stops short, 30 metres or so out from the try line. This is the last, so the ball will go up in the air. Courtesy of Jack Michoud, it's a tricky one. 
It's still dribbling away over on that left-hand side. It's gone into touch. I think Oral will be pretty pleased with that end of set. Yeah, they certainly will be. Look where they started the set. And they've just rolled all the way down the field, turned the ball over 10 metres away from their opposition line. I would have liked Nathan Goodwin to have been brave enough to field that kick and look for a way out, but he lets it trickle over. And now here's Finch, they've got to roll up 90 men, sorry, 90 metres all the way. Oh, that's a big shot there from Whittle. Get that into you. An early statement in this defensive set from Oral. Here's Finch with all this real estate to cover up the field. It's being met with defence like that. Yeah. And we should mention it as well, Kyle. There is a little bit of a slope. Oh, huge hit. Get that into you. Right, Whittle doing exactly what you want your starting front rowers to do and be physically dominant. And again, he goes lucky but misses. Flying yeah. in. Brad Davies with the carry on that occasion. And that's a and super kick set. Goes in and a really good defensive set from Oral. So the kick goes over the top. Gallagher. That's a part of the field that we find it difficult to see, Lewis, given where we are. It's difficult in that left-hand corner, but Gallagher does well. I'm on my tiptoes, Carl. You have the advantage of being over five foot nine tall. <laughs> And there's a penalty given away as well. So here's Finch. They've not started this game in great fashion. A couple of errors and a penalty now as well. And this could be coming straight for us. Oh, it is. <laughs> so that'll take them up to the halfway line. Well, just short. And Oral with their best platform of the game so far. Siani. Hard and fast carry, as we've seen early on in this game from him. Feel like he's going to have a big impact. And now they go out to the other middle, Tom Whittle. Mortars brings us out to the left-hand side. Brad Calland, eventually floored by the Hairsfitch defence. We've got a little bit of work to do here as... Oral stack the shape over to his right hand side, and this is the way they come. The fullback Sam Burns coming into the line. He stopped on the 20. Yeah, good defence there from Matty Ross. Just got in his face. Killed the threat. And a slow play of the ball as well. And Mortars, not a huge amount he could do there from dummy half. He's brought down. This is the last. So an attacking kick to come. They will take it out wide. And it'll be just stabbed through. And in the end, it's dealt with well by Goodwin at fullback. Yeah. But not a bad position for Oral to be turning the ball over again. No, not a bad little kick either from Jack McHugh that just rolls it in and asks Goodwin to field it. Chases his own kick as well, which I like, always like that in a half. One who doesn't sit back and admires their own work. He goes and gets his head stuck into the dirty part of the work. But here's Finch once again, it just seemed to be... You know, the most of the game is played down this end of the field as they look to roll forward once more. I think it's Danny Lynch this time. And this is good defence from Oral. It really is. Yeah, Oral turning the screw defensively early on. Danny Lars just looking to get his team out of their own end, but this is the last, and the kicking from inside their own half again. Up it goes. It's a real towering kick. Oh, he's dropped. He want it. Sam Burns with the error. That's disappointing, Lewis, after all that good work, keeping them down 30 metres, and the kick wasn't exactly a good one off the boot of the Hairsfinch half, but it's an error. And could it be a costly one as well? There wasn't a huge amount of chase either. So a real bonus, this field position for Hairsfinch. The offload is away, and they perhaps have got a little bit of a gap here up the middle. Danny Lynch just brought down 20 metres or so, so they come out to the right-hand side. A little bit of shape. Matty Norton just trying to get himself through a gap. The ball's come out here with Oral. And they'll get away with it. And here's Finch unable to make the most of that error. Yeah, it's another error again inside. A good ball for Hares Finch. It was one with the left back rower in the it previously. And then this time it's Matty Norton's turn, the other back rower, to come up with the error. I mentioned them two pre-game, but it looked like there was an error there. Yeah, referee sees that as well. It's a little bit of pressure creeping in here, Lewis. Yeah, it's uh, a nervy start to the game for both teams. I'm sure both coaches will be just trying to get the message on to settle it down, just calm their teams and cut the errors out. Ten minutes in, no score. 
But here's Finch with an opportunity, yeah. a platform set here, to maybe do something over on this left-hand side. I think the two errors that Oral have came up with have been at the play of the ball, aren't they? So just again, both from the dummy half position. It's a little lapse in concentration. But these, particularly this where we are, 20 metres away from their own line, it's not the, the smartest or the best place to turn the ball over. So from the scrum, they come out to the right. And they stop 10 metres short. Plenty of options stacked over to this left-hand side. Charlie Wilson taking it in. He's brought down in the shadow of the sticks. And again, they opt to go left. And another error. And another let-off for Oral. And it's starting to feel like a while since we've had a completed set, yeah. Carl. And you do just feel that the team that can get control of this game now and get into the arm wrestle properly is the, the one that's really going to kick on in this first half. Yeah, it's Matty Ross there. We've seen that play out the back twice now and it's came up with errors. And if Hayes Finch are going to have any sort of chance of, of winning this game, they must be better in good ball. That's three errors in a row now. And basically just letting Oro off the hook every time. They're not having to exert any energy to defend the full set. And they can just clear the lines once more. There's McLaughlin. It's a big hit going on at both ends of the field. Oral with the job on this occasion of bringing the ball off their own line. There's Finch. They'll have their tails up a little bit, knowing that there might be an opportunity to cause another error. But that's a better carry from Tom Whittle. Getting his team on the front foot. Finding his front and getting a reasonable play of the ball for his troubles. Defence is very much on top at this stage, Kyle. Yeah, well, again, they've not really had to go set for set, so they'll have all the energy. A little switch back down. Half a chance here. Colsey just takes the tackle. So on the last, they spread it out to the left. McHugh puts it up in the air again. Testing one for Goodwin. Just about. Diffuses the danger and returns the kick up to the 40 metre line. You just feel that one of these two sides just needs to get hold of this game by the scruff of the neck because we're 12 minutes in and, like I just mentioned, not really being much set for set rugby, not really exposing any tired bodies as yet because the number of breaks that we've had in play. So here's Finch just inside. Just over the halfway line now. Should just point out at this stage that that camera you can see on the referee's head is not part of our coverage. I think that's for some kind of internal review process. The RFL match official department as Sam Burns does his best juggling impression and then slips. But he has kept hold of the football. Oral with a lot of work to do coming off their own goal line. Well, the one concern that I had when I looked down Oral's team sheet is the fact that they've only got four half-backs on the bench. There's no recognised front rower in there. Davis, Kelt, Ball and Findlow. So they're going to have to rely on their middles, the starting middles particularly, to come up with big minutes. And that's well hit there, well met. Matty Ross just controlling that tackle. Siani now, he tries to roll forward. It's good work again from Marker. Here's Finch really just chalking these players off. So they come over to the right-hand side. Oh, nice ball. Good. Oh, well met there. Switch back on the inside, but the defence was turned on to it. Yeah, Jordan Morris wouldn't going to be fooled by that. Now the kick comes in. Kick pressure was good, and it's just a low, bobbling one along the floor. It's a really poor kick, Lewis. Goodwin deals with it, as you'd expect him to from fullback. Returns with interest. And here's Finch, some point, it's early days in this game, but at some point, Kyle, they're going to want to take advantage of some of these platforms and field positions that they're being gifted. Yeah, absolutely. And I just feel that, I think it's Matty Norton who's rolling yeah, forward now, gets away from Whittle. They weren't able up. to wrap him up properly, and he's made some very handy bonus yards off the back of it. So again, here's Finch with an opportunity in good ball as they bring it out to the right-hand side. Since Hairs Finch side over the last couple of sets is finding the groove, Lewis. And they're in a good position here. Charlie Wilson plays the ball to come out to the left, keeping it reasonably tight again. 
Danny Lynch from loose forward taking it, foot, taking it in. And now they come over to the left-hand side, and if the numbers are right, they could be in here. Oral's defence. There's a six again called as well there, Lewis. On this occasion. So we've got another five players here, five metres away. Just a little drop-off ball back on the inside. So we're coming to the right here. Could be a shift play on here as they look from edge to edge. In the end, Aaron Lynch deciding to just keep ball in hand. But they're knocking on the door for the first try of the game. Here's Finch. He offloads in. Oh, good defence there. Defence does really well. Yeah. Here's Danny Lynch, just tried to pinch one from nine, throws the ball out. And it looked like there was a bit of space on that right-hand side of the field, but the inside work from St James's, you just see there. I think it's James, sorry, Jack McHugh just comes across, shuts the player down and forces Hayes Finch over the sideline. Well defended. But again, as we've been saying quite a lot, it feels, for the last five minutes or so of this game, Oral have the ball camped deep in their own half and a lot of work to do coming out of yardage. And as you mentioned, looking at the two benches, you're going to want to keep the middles as fresh as you can across this 80 minutes. Yeah, you certainly are. Obviously, Hayes Finch have the luxury of Chris Clayton, Darren Wilson to come on through the middle of the field. I think Jack, uh, sorry, Jordan Morris there. Signed from Pilks in the close season to come over to Hayes Finch. A number of these Hayes Finch players have been sort of cherry picked in and around the town of St. Helens at Clockface. Pilks just building that team because they have been growing year on year. Their story is quite remarkable. Oh, There's another error here. Gone backwards, says the referee. Oh, Ziani no. drops on it. But then a follow up. And Hayes Finch will have the ball 10 metres out from the oral line. And you just feel like the home side at the moment are living yeah. danger dangerously. And at some point, one of these errors is going to be very costly. I think so, yeah. Again, and it's another error, a simple error, really, from the play of the ball. A loose pass. And they're just putting themselves under more pressure. And I fancy Hayes Finch crashing over now. I think they've just had a number of minutes, sustained period of time on their line, and eventually it will break. Well, they've opted to take the scrum over on the right-hand side, which suggests that they're going to look to put some kind of edge shift on here. And they do come out to the left. Goodwin putting the ball across. Quick play of the ball here. Six again, oh, six again give it away there. Just a bit of extras. And I think they might be over in that corner. It's very difficult for us to see. Just stop short. That's a good tackle, isn't it? But now they do come over to this right-hand side, just to step back in. What can Hairsfinch do here? Now they come over to the right edge, still keeping it amongst the forwards, though. Space being restricted for the wingers early on. Norrell won't be too displeased with the way that they've managed to slow some of these rucks down. But now an opportunity, oh, good win at full back, really there. good defensive read. Liam McLaughlin straight in his face. But they come over to the left edge and there could be space here. Excellent defensive work. And Oral keep them out again. And so somehow we're still at nil-nil, Carl. No, it's another brilliant defensive set there from Oral. But they don't need to be doing that. They're putting themselves under too much pressure as the ball comes out from right to left. And it's a brilliant tackle from Jack Gallagher. You just see... It's just his left foot just dinks the line just there, there it is, and it's there. enough. A really good last ditch defensive effort for Morrill. But at some point, they are going to need to shift where this game is being played. They're not going to be able to survive for too much longer under their own sticks. No, it's important that they get through this set. Nothing fancy. Hard in and around the rock, just roll down the field and. That's McHugh just to put a big kick in downfield and just flip the game on its head because that's great defence again from Hayes Finch. You just lose him at the last part, though. Well 
So Oral looking to get themselves out of yardage. Well, it's good work from Marker again, isn't it? Shut down by the markers. He's having to do a lot of the early work here. And Whittle with the follow-up carry. Oh. And again, Hairsfinch will be very pleased with it defensive effort yeah just that extra work there from Briggs will delight the coach because what it does is it allows other players to not get involved keep the team's energy and when the time's right if they can just take their opportunities then they could be further sorry they could be well ahead in this game they've had a period of time down there but credit Oral they've defended everything that has been thrown at them and that's a great kick well, it's turned the fullback around it's just gonna dribble on slightly too far probably aided by the slope a little bit well, that's OK, because look at the bodies that are having to get back behind the ball. You can see oh, Briggs is there, there. And it just allows the Oral to just suck up some air. Get some oxygen, some oxygen, 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 oxygen the now. It's important that they attack their attack with the defence now. Get themselves off the line and do what they did early doors inside the opening 10 minutes and, and really try and assert the dominance on air's finish. But there's a six again, I think, giving away straight away. Bit of a messy ruck, but Ayers Finch get themselves on the move with Ryan Briggs. Dummy half keeping the ball in his own hands. So now they look over to this left-hand side of Charlie Wilson. He's chopped down. Solid player, Wilson. One of the players playing the ball. Brad Davies with the carry. Ayers Finch just doing the simple stuff in their own half. Goodwin, the fullback, bringing it up to the line. He's met well by the oral defence, brought down. 40 metres or so away. Another error. Another error. Tackle four. And a turnover. Well, is this the opportunity, Lewis, that Oral were waiting for? Just that little shift yeah, in momentum, just, isn't it? Yeah, they've had to, like I say, I've mentioned a couple of times, they had to ride the wave 10 minutes ago. They started the game well, so, you know, we're 21 minutes into the game, and if you split it over two tens, it's really been Oral and then Hayes Finch, but... The scoreboard suggests nil-nil, so no one's been able to take advantage of it. Games often do ebb and flow in terms of momentum. And you know, like I say, is this perhaps a time and a period in the game where Oral can now put some stuff together? So an opportunity perhaps Siani again. He drops the ball off. I think that's Mahieu just trying to dance his way through. McHugh playing the ball. And again, they opt to go down this right-hand side. Oh, nice, there's a chance Good here. Good work from Burns, the full-back, and there could be a way here. The ball oh, comes back brilliant. on the inside, and Sam Burns will open the scoring for Oral. And after all the errors and attritional defence, it is a sublime bit of rugby league that opens the scoring here in the Betfred Challenge Cup first round. And Kyle, we spoke about Hairsfinch needing to take advantage of some of those chances. Yeah. They didn't. An oral strike first. Well, it was right on cue, wasn't it, when I just mentioned about momentum ebbing and flowing in games. And I like the player before this with Siani, and Hughes takes it, but it's down this right-hand side, and it's McLaughlin who finds him some space, and Sam Burns supporting like all good full-backs should do, sniffing back an opportunity through the middle of the field. But I really like this, just soft, delicate hands over to the centre there. Winger cuts back inside, full-backs there. And look what it means there, Jack McHugh straight in there with Sam Burns. Brilliant oral try, 4-0. So Oral have their first points of the game, the first points of their Betfred Challenge Cup campaign for 2024. An opportunity to, an opportunity to improve that from right in front of the sticks. Looks like it's going to be Callum Taylor on kicking duties for the home side this afternoon. I just really like that, you know, they'd soak and soaked up 10 minutes of pressure and then were able to hit, pick off a short side, eyes up rugby and just good skill on the back of it. And that kick, just <laughs> it about. went over, but it was low and hard to say the least. It was a little bit of a crossbar challenge effort. Yeah, maybe. But it wobbled its way over and Oral have improved their lead out to a six-point advantage. Well, a beautiful little switch play, back so down the short side. The it's brilliant, created numbers, it was a four on two. And again, McLaughlin has the skill, has the support from Burns, and it's 6 0 in the Betfred Round 1 Challenge Cup. Well, we're very pleased to have you with us here live on the Sportsman. All season, of course, 20 live games across a variety of competitions. This is the first, and what a try to kick us off for the year from Sam Burns and Oral St. James. 
And Hayes Finch now just need to pick themselves up a little bit because, as we've said, they had that spell where it was all them and all of a sudden they find themselves behind on the scoreboard, Carl. Yeah, they certainly do. It was just a lapse in concentration on this left-hand side of the field. I think it was Josh Ainsworth who was just isolated on his own and with four defenders arriving, at, uh, sorry, with four attackers arriving at speed. There wasn't a lot he could do. He needed some help and didn't get any. Well, a penalty as well, I think, but it looks yeah. a bit... Well, it's important that Oral along. take advantage of the slope. You mentioned the slope in the first half. There is one. And it's important now that they just get a, a sense of an opportunity now just to build some more points, put some pressure on even. They don't have to come away with points at this stage of the game, but if they can just sort of play the, play the rest of this half down this end of the field, then they will come for sure. That's a decent kick as well. Moving Oral downfield. I think that's Adam Ball by the looks of it. He's coming to the action for the home side. Ringing the changes. And now they come over to the left. The defence is good, and there's an error in there, yeah. says the referee. Here's Finch. Be very pleased to have shut that down early on in the set. Yeah, we so often see it and say it, don't we? Set after points is important. They got a little bit of a leg up there with the penalty, but they've just come away with another error. Just want to get to the end of that set, really, Lewis. Roll a kick in and just tell your opposition to come all the way off their line. Another little switch play back down the left-hand side this time, both halves combining. And it was a little pre-plan move. You can just see there how Callum Taylor just cuts an under from his winger and tries to arrive on that short ball, but it's an error. Yeah, a few times already. We've seen James Corsi and Jack McHugh just flipping, oh, it, flipping around the rail. Well. That won't help. So here's Finch with a golden opportunity to just move themselves <laughs> up the field and re-establish themselves in this territory battle. Well, the errors and penalties that we so far on the evidence we've had in 26 minutes seem to come in tandem, don't they? Yeah. So here's Finch looking to hit back after being arguably the better team in the first 20 minutes or so. They find themselves behind on the scoreboard. They look to put that right as quickly as possible. Danny Lynch carrying forward. Kelly Duffy on the field now. Oh, big contact there it was. Nathan Ellis, the young 18-year-old. So Kelly Duffy brings us over to the right-hand side. Another strong carry. There's Finch just edging their way closer to that try line. So Kelly Duffy again brings us over to the right, but they come back in. Just keeping it in that central channel for the time being. Danny Lynch getting a few bonus metres there from the offload. So here's Finch now, come back inside. What's he doing? And Kelly's just put the <laughs> kick in. And in the end, it's been fielded pretty well by the oral defender on the run. And a missed opportunity. And, and then, then a penalty, a penalty as, well. as well. Yeah, there's Finch. I'm just scratching my head wondering what it is they were trying to do here. It's almost a nothing kick. Straight down the full-back's throat there, Sam Burns. And as he clears his lines, I think he gets one right across the chops for good oh, measure just, just there. The <laughs> yeah. And this is why we love this game at this level. Darren Wilson there, just catching one, comes in with a slight swinging arm. It's just a penalty. To be, look, if I'm going to be uh, harsh, it's a soft one to give away, isn't it? There's not really enough contact to hurt him or do anything to Sam Burns. He almost just tickles him across the face. And Siani with the big carry, getting his team moving. Up the other end of the pitch, that Ayers Finch defensive line-up quickly again. I've been impressed with Norton and Lynch. Both very similar in Davies build. Front play the ball. And this is very similar position to where they struck from previously. There's Finch will be very keen that they get their defensive numbers right. Adam Ball. Adam Ball. Taking it in. Jack Davies brings us over to the left. Oral have rung a few substitutions. Sam Burns now on the other edge oh. and he's through again. And he oh, gets the pass away. Super. Brilliant, and the brilliant. try is scored, it's Lewis round. And again, Sam Burns all over it. 
for Oral, a brilliant break, lovely bit of skill with the pass, and Lewis round there to finish it off. Well, the most impressive part of that try, Lewis, for me, was the halfback. His change of speed, it puts everybody on the back foot, and he's able to find a pass. And I'm not quite sure how it unfolded down that left edge, but in the blink of an eye, Sam Burns is under the post. We just see the Betfred replay here on the Sportsman. Just watch the change of pace there from McHugh. Digs right into the line, throws the ball out to Burns, and he just cuts through, supplies the ball there to his winger in Lewis Round, who rounds the defence and scores. <laughs> That's why we pay you the big bucks, Kyle. <laughs> And another opportunity in front of the sticks. Sam Burns, you're right, Lewis, he does ever so well to just brush past his centre, gets round him. And Lewis round there, a tough competitor at this level, just puts the ball and gives Kelp a good opportunity here to make it 12-0. A bit more height on it there. Yeah, well, I changed the kick up. Karen Taylor took the, the first effort. Calc on this occasion. Just putting it again. straight over. Yeah, from the centre of the field, the depth, the time. He digs right into the line. Does McHugh and Burns, he does the rest. And supporting up through on that over on that far hand side of the field, sorry, left hand side is Lewis Round. And it's 12 0. And what you sort of what was noticeable there is how deep Sam Burns starts off in that move so in terms of Hairsfinch getting their numbers right it's tricky yeah. isn't it when you've got a fullback who, who's so deep but brings themselves into the line so well and that's what I meant there Lewis the depth of what they were playing at and the change of pace there from the halfback everybody when that happens everybody just stops and goes on the heels and you have to keep moving you have to keep your feet moving defensively because players like Burns with the speed they have well they'll just round you well, after a kg first 20 minutes or so, it's a, a double sucker punch from Oral to give them a 12-0 lead just after half an hour gone. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's not what they wanted. An error. Just opening the door for Hares Finch. They've not been able to take advantage of any of these opportunities yet. Well, look, again, the first quarter of the, of the half belonged to Oral. The second quarter, Hares Finch. The third quarter, evidently, with a 12-0 score. Now, Hairs Finch can come away and get a try here before half-time. It'd be massive. It would be huge, wouldn't it? So it's a bit of a tit-for-tat game at the moment. So Lynch plays the ball. Duffy Kelly picks it up from dummy half and brings him out to the left-hand side. Duffy Kelly again at dummy half. Brings us out to the right. They've got numbers stacked, but they keep it in the middle. That tackle just about the safe side of a tip so Hairs Finch continue again numbers on the right keeping the ball in hand it's both halfbacks there in that set have took the line on keeping Oral's defence honest so far Oral level to what's being thrown at them and again they neglect the opportunity to go wide keep it tight last one what can Hairs Finch do they come over to the right they've got numbers perhaps the offload's just slightly behind the winger. He can't bring it in cleanly. And again, Oral withstand the Hairsfinch pressure. Yeah, look, they're defending the line incredibly well. That's twice now down that right-hand side. We've seen a short side play from them. And it's good wing play there from Lewis Round. Defensively just gets in the eye line of the centre. And the skill over the top wasn't quite where it needed to be. And they survived once more. Well done, Oral. Oral bringing the ball off their own line again. But a bit of a different feel to it now with that 12-point buffer. They'll be very happy to just try and ride this game through to half-time, get in the sheds with this lead intact, and then go again in the second half, having after a bit of a breather. Hasn't he done well, Siani? 33 minutes in. He's done a huge amount of work, hasn't he? Yeah. And now Oral come over to this left-hand side. Oh, just yeah, it's Finch defence does a very very good job of shuffling across and the ball goes out of play just needed to take the tackle Lewis there they've tried to come up with a player an impossible player really on this side There's probably didn't need land. to be the miss no, out pass did it yeah you've just got to take your tackle there early yeah. on in the set as well yeah the thing is Oral don't need to chase this half anymore do they 12-0 up 
They've just got to make sure that they get through the sets and make it uncomfortable and difficult. And Hayes Finch, you know, when they play inside their opposition half, they seem to find another level, a bit more energy than they do down the other end of the field. You can see here the fight and the tackle and wanting to get up and play the ball. It's Kelly Duffy at play the ball. Again, dropping it off to Lynch. Come over to this left-hand side. That's a good tackle there. Just creeping ever closer, Mike Fields now playing the ball. Duffy Kelly brings us out to the right. Could be some shape on here and some space over on this right-hand side. Oh, and again, the oral edge well, defence yeah. just does so well. There have been three or four occasions now and Hayes Finch have looked over to that right edge to try and find the space, but just been shut down. Well, that's three times now that they've tried to find some space down there. And it's Norton who just throws out the cutout ball to Allen. But once again, just look at the patience of the left edge. Everybody just connected. And when that pass is thrown, Lewis Round is just able to get in the face of Niall Allen and force him over the sideline. Brilliant stuff from Oral. Yeah, he's had a very good game so far. Lewis Round defensively and, of course, getting himself on the score sheet. Well, perhaps the message for, for the Hayes Finch players is maybe try go route one. They've tried four times now, three times on the right side, one on the left, and they've just ran out of land. So maybe perhaps dropping people back under, really working over the middle unit of Oral. We've mentioned that Kai Siani's going to play big minutes, try and tire him out, and just see if you can get any joy anywhere in between the middle of the field. There's been a few times, haven't there, where Aaron Lynch and Matty Ross have chosen to keep the ball in hand and just take the line on. So I don't know, maybe they're just a little bit caught in two minds about mm. how to attack that right edge and they're running out of space. Asiani looking to get Oral out of their own real estate again. That first carry, you wouldn't, that, sorry, that carry has looked no different to his first carry. He's got a really good engine, Kai Siani. Yeah, met fiercely though by the Hairsfitch line. That's another good carry there. Just finds a bit of space on the left-hand shoulder of Mike Fields. And all of a sudden... play the ball. And they're on the front foot now. Where they were making three or four metres in a carry. It's turning into six, seven, eight, isn't it? And it yeah. is just making a difference. They're turning the screw bit by bit. This is the last, so they'll have to do something here on fifth. Well, that's good kick yes. pressure. Uh, slow play the ball and... As you say, good kick pressure, which is deflected from the charge down. And that's it's six zero. again. Yeah. It was played at, says the referee. So Oro will get a bit of a bonus set here. They bring it up the middle. Kaisiani. They've got a real opportunity, Oral, to, to almost put a nail in a coffin here. Well, one more try before half time. Yeah, you feel in a game like this will be a, a big, big mountain for Hairsfinch to climb. Yeah. Only four points between these sides when they last met in that semi-final. So Hesvic absolutely have the ability to rein this game back in, but at the moment, they're just in danger of letting Oral really get ahead of steam up and a real nice cushion. Adam Ball there uh, just carries, they're at the centre of the field. Options Which side are they going right. to go? They choose that left-hand side. Burns again coming into the line. This time he's dealt with. This is the last. Will they go high? Will they go along the ground with the kick? They're keeping it in hand for the time being. No, that's okay. just going to run it. Yeah, that's fine. Good that's game management, really, to just turn it over there, make Hersvic do the hard work. Yeah, they had the shape to run the ball, but in the end, it was just a little halfback, James Causey, who just decided to take it. And there you go. And they get the ball back. There's a real opportunity here for Oral to take advantage of this. A soft error. So they come over to the right-hand side. That Hairsfish defence straight up to meet them. But Oral banging on the door. Davies bringing us out to the right-hand side. Six again called. Some more pressure on Hairsfinch. Burns at play the ball, brings us out. Adam Ball just settles the tackle. And they're going to come left Underneath eight. the sticks. A little bit of a messy ruck. And the referee's just going to stop the game. Just to tidy it all up a bit. So it will stay as it was. Oral Ball. 
Oh, there's a huge hole opened up there. Oh, he's just lost shots. it. Oh, oh, oh. just that he was through. Oh. Spills his lollies. Yeah, Bradley Over Kelly. The line. Here's Finch survive a huge scare just before half time. He snaps hard off his right foot and creates the space for himself just there. But just as he's about to put oh, the ball down, that. there's an arm in there. An and... arm in the tackle does enough. I don't think it's a strip, it's a it's a loose carry. Yeah, yeah, no, it certainly is. Look. Gotta do more to protect the ball, but a really good defensive effort from Hayes Finch. And as we approach half time, you feel like that moment could be crucial. Well look, I don't think at 12 0 this Hayes Finch side are out of this competition. Uh, sorry, are out of this contest at all. You know, they've got the slope to come as well. You just felt there that if if Oral could just get another one on the board, it might just give them a bit like you mentioned earlier, a bit too much of a mountain to climb. But it's important that Hayes Finch score next in this second half if they're going to give us a, a contest for the rest of this game. Hayes Finch, of course, will have the slope in their favour in the second half, and I'm sure they will be bearing that in mind. Fitness, of course, will come into play as well, Kyle. It's worth remembering that these are amateur players at this stage of the competition. Yeah. If they're anything like me, they might have indulged a little bit too much over Christmas. <laughs> and me. <laughs> Interesting to see who makes the better of that in the second half. Hairs Finch will definitely be looking forward to having the slope in their advantage. Again, we've mentioned a number of times the errors and the penalties and, uh, and whatnot, particularly in the first half of this of this first half. But that is down to, like you mentioned, uh, this is a first time hit out for these two teams, isn't it? You know, it's not like we're here in the middle of April where they've played a number of games under the belt. It's very much is pre-season, but the stakes are much higher. Yeah, fantastic occasion here at Oral, a wonderful crowd around us. And the majority of them will be very pleased with what they've seen so far. Oral, 12-0 to the good against Hares Finch. Oh, now we could be in trouble, it's all, oh, it's all at the near. And they come in from everywhere, left and right. It was a horrible tackle. It was a, a tackle with no control in it at all. And that was all it needed, really, to light the blue touch paper. And the referee's going to have some work to do here to, one, stop this, and then sort it all out. Well, I think Oral could be down a man here, which makes it very interesting for the second half. Because it was an awful tackle. There was not really any need for it. Well, I would suspect the only question here might be which colour comes out of the referee's pocket. Well, my first thought, it has to be a red, Lewis. That's my first thought. It didn't look good, did it? Josh Eves there. In the middle of that as well. Carrying the water for them. So a few little bits. We just waited to see for our match officials to sort out. And actually, up until that point, it had been a, pretty, a game played in a pretty good spirit. Yeah. But I think there's certainly a card, Lewis, 100%. It just depends what colour. My, my first gut reaction was a red. Well, it's a yellow. So it'll be 10 minutes. Well, a yellow each way. So it looks like that is probably for the afters. So it's Goodwin, the fullback, who walks for Hairs Finch. And it looks like Jack Davies is taking 10 minutes sit down for Oral. I think the referee there just taking the sting out of it, giving the everybody flying in. He's talking to the two captains now, just right on the stroke of half time. Apologies. Taking a sit down for Oral. As we've mentioned, we are right amongst the crowd here, so slightly difficult at times just to see numbers on backs. We'll do our best. Just see but there. the important thing is, as we see it again, it's a Hairs Finch penalty. Well, he just manages to put his arm out, doesn't it's he? That isn't it from Goodwin. That yeah. second, that Goodwin coming in, that second man in, that's kind of caused the the afters that have followed. Well, now, over the top. A little bit of. 
off the cuff rugby league and it hasn't worked but time. that was last play of the half yeah so you can understand why they went for it yeah and a fiery end to what's been a thoroughly entertaining first 40 minutes of rugby league here at Oral St James half time in the first round of the Betfred Challenge Cup and the home side Oral lead Hairsfinch by 12 points to nil and uh, in some respects it doesn't really feel like that scoreline reflects what we've seen Carl not really no look I think Oral have been the better side throughout the 40 minutes but they put themselves under an awful lot of pressure early on but it was just that sort of that that patch in between 20 and 30 minutes where Oral just found another gear and were able to score two tries through Burns and Gallagher and, and the scoreboard sits at 12-0 yeah Burns influential in both tries scoring one creating the other yeah it was just this little Let's switch see, back, yeah. wasn't it? It's just that flick around the ruck. You can just see there, there's four, def four attackers on two defenders. And it's McLaughlin who finds that ball back inside to Sam Burns, who opens up the score. And that was around about 23 minutes in. Beautiful play, good composure, good skill as well. And just scores that try right under the pulse. The conversion was nailed as well. But then it was this player, just McHugh, the shape, the speed at which Burns arrives onto the ball. He just rounds... I think it's Norton or Morris on that far side. It's Norton, it actually it was. And then round just to finish it off. Burns does Norton for pace. And round just to go all the way and dot the ball down under there. And it was a converted as well by Kelk, I think it was this time. That was 12-0. And then just before, there was almost a chance for 18-0. Three scores ahead. And he just can't get that arm out in time. There's a there's an arm, isn't there, from our last bit of desperation defence there from Hayes Finch that, that saves the blushes and probably like say, keeps them in the game. It absolutely does. It and certainly does. We could does. be talking about that in 40 minutes or so time as a huge moment in this match. But as we stand at half time in the Bet Fred Challenge Cup, it is Oral St. Oral St. James 12, Hayes Finch nil. We're gonna take a break. We'll see you shortly for the second half. Finish. Goes for the corner and Leah Burns in. Partington all the way to the line. And it's Tamsin Renew. The pass from Harley Dodd. Probably they're going to get them a touchdown right through the post. Can they get on the end of it? Yes, they can. Oh, he's gone for the same ball and he's got oh, work. Beautiful. It's going to be able. Is he able to strike one through the post? He might score the winner. Brings it up to the line, drops it off to Hazard and reaches through. Now he's on perhaps. He's got it! You're watching the Sportsman Rugby League. Subscribe for weekly shows, exclusive content and live games. That is a remarkable finish. Burke, Burke goes for the corner and Leah Burke's in. And it's Tamsin Renault. The pass from Harley Dodd. And this could be the first score of the game because London are going to get them and touch down. He's gone for the same ball and he's got oh, work. Beautiful. They might score the winner. And North Wales have another. Brings it up to the line, drops it off to Hazard who reaches through. You're watching the Sports from Rugby League. Subscribe for weekly shows, exclusive content and live games. the same ball and he's got oh, work. Beautiful. It's going to be able. Is he able to strike one through the close? He might score the winner. Brings it up to the line, drops it off to Hazard who reaches through. Now he's on perhaps. He's got it. You're watching the Sportsman Rugby League. Subscribe for weekly shows. Exclusive content and live games. That 
is a remarkable finish. Burke, Burke goes for the corner and Leah Burke's in. And it's Tamsin Renew. The pass from Harley Dodd. And this could be the first goal of the game because London are going to get them and touch down. He's gone for the same ball and it's gone. Oh, beautiful. They might score the winner. And North Wales have another. Brings it up to the line, drops it off to Hazard who reaches through. You're watching the Sports from Rugby League. Subscribe for weekly shows, exclusive content and live games. the same ball and it's gonna oh, work. Beautiful. It's gonna be able. Is he able to strike one through the close? He might score the winner. Brings it up to the line, drops it off to Hazard who reaches through. Now he's on perhaps. He's got it. Welcome back to game day on the Sportsman Betfred Challenge Cup round one action. And we are halfway through this tussle between Oral St. James and Hares Finch. And it is the home side Oral who lead 12 0 at the break. Kyle Amor alongside me. Hares Finch, plenty of spells of pressure, unable yeah. to take their advantage. Oral clinical when they needed to be. Yeah, I'd agree with that, Lewis. The, the, uh, particularly early on in the game, Hayes Finch started the brighter out of the two sides, but I just feel the lack of execution from them, particularly near Oral's line, ultimately cost them because in the end when Oral had their turn to flip the switch well they were able to come up with two sucker blows weren't they and those two tries there from Burns in round and that's why the scoreboard sits at 12-0 but there's still plenty to play for here this afternoon at Oral St James's Hares Finch of course they have the downhill slope but crucially as well for me and it might be you know something that we that we find over the course of the next 40 minutes is that interchange that they have at their disposal they've got a lot of props light for light props as well and you look at the bench there of oral i mentioned in the first half four halfbacks predominantly that can play you're almost putting square pegs in round holes you know big job for kaisiani and tom whittle when he returns to the field uh, but so far it's advantage oral yeah 40 enthralling minutes on the way here on the Sports and Rugby League all season. We'll be with you. We've got 20 live games, plenty of Challenge Cup action in that mix as well. So tell your friends, tell your family, get the word out on social media. This is the place for these early rounds of the Betfred Challenge Cup. And we've got 40 minutes to settle this one. Oral, St. James versus Hares Finch. Wigan versus St. Helens, of course. And maybe we just saw a little bit of that uh, Rivalry, that tastiness in the last Towards few the moments there, yeah, yeah. of that first half, Kyle. And you never know if this game closes up in terms of the scoreboard, we may see discipline become a, an increasing issue. Yeah, well, both so sides which... both sides have been guilty of that, Lewis. You know, it's not sort of heavily in favour of one or the other. Multiple errors, multiple penalties as well. I just feel that, you know, that period of time, that eight-minute period, I think it was... Uh, in the second half of the first half, just ju Oral just took advantage and, uh, and were able to create space. We're able to put a couple of nice little players on down both edges and give those fans a nice little two-score advantage in the favour of the home side. But again, it's so important that Hayes Finch start. And uh, uh, when I mean start well in this second half, they don't have to go chasing points straight away. But when they do get down into good ball, they need to just be a bit more relaxed, a bit more composed. 
and, and, and I honestly think that through the middle of the field is going to be where points come for them because they've tested both edges and Oral have answered every single thing that's thrown at them. Yeah, fantastic crowd all around this pitch. We've just been told as well that they've got the Sports and Rugby League coverage on in the bar. So hello to everybody in there in the warm. Great to have you with us. If one of them would come and bring us a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, that'd be nice. <laughs> That is the only thing about these early rounds of the Challenge Cup, Carl. It's all well and good, that final being in June. It's, uh, it's woolly socks I need to invest in. The tolls are gone. So the referees leading the home side are all back out onto the pitch. Both teams, of course, will do pretty much the full first 10 minutes of this second half down to 12 men. So a little bit of extra space. I'd imagine if you're someone like Sam Burns, you might be rubbing your hands together at the thought of that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that space, the pace that he arrives onto the ball. He's such a smart, intelligent player at this level. And he's been exposing this Hayes Finch defence on a number of occasions. Sometimes he's been caught with the ball, but more often than not, his injection, his liveliness when he's on the ball has really hurt the opposition. And at 12 0, you know, the carrot of York Acorn in the next round, an NCL Prem side, it doesn't get much tougher for these two teams if they do progress through. But as we've seen over a number of years, the magic of the cup throws out some bizarre results and, you know, they'll not look past this next 40 minutes, that's for sure. But an opportunity to carry on and progress and keep that dream alive for these these clubs at this level. It's normally, it's not really about the destination, it's about the journey that they can go on. Well, that's why we love this competition. Oral last year all the way to the third round to take on Betfred. League One opposition in the Midlands Hurricanes. Here's Finch making their Betfred Challenge Cup debut. And we're back underway. Oral coming from right to left up the slope on your screens. Callum Taylor starting us off with just a carry, trying to get back into the middle of the field there. But he's met by Lynch. That's another carry. Straighten up a lot of the outside backs, just getting in early doors, getting a feel of it. And the messages you would feel would have been probably quite different in both sheds. From an oral perspective, these early stages of this second half will just be about completion, winning the arm wrestle and getting themselves in control of this game because they don't need to do much else, do they, Carl? No, they don't. Darren Wilson there just straightening up, trying to get a quick play of the ball. It's a decent set defensively from Hayes Finch. Kaisiani with his second carry gets rid of yeah, his opposite of number defenders. there. Yeah. This is the last, though, and they have been restricted in the metres they're able to make. So the kick will come in. Causey just putting it up. Taken pretty routinely in the end. And Hayes Finch will start with the ball in reasonable field position. With the slope. Boys and, an and an error in the mix, so Oral will yeah. get the ball back. And that's exactly what Hayes Finch didn't want in these early exchanges. And Oral with an early opportunity to get themselves into some territory, turn the screw. It's just disappointing from a Hayes Finch perspective because he done well defensively there. And just a soft, a soft error allows Oral just to keep hold of the ball, put a bit more pressure on. It's the first time that they'll get a crack in this second half near the Hayes Finch line. As Brad Kell, uh, is it Kell? But uh, ball, sorry, wins his side a penalty. Yeah. So an error, and then a penalty from Ayers Finch. It's just that arm riding yeah. high, isn't it? There's no malice in it. It's just high. It's just he slit, loses his footing a little bit, doesn't he? The, the arm rides up, but an, an error and a penalty has given Oral fantastic field position early on in the second half. And pretty much the opposite, I'd imagine, to what Ayers Finch said in the sheds at the break. Ziani coming back on the inside. Another strong carry from him. Good controlled ruck, though, from the Ayers Finch defence. Slows the play, the ball down. Options left and right. They opt to come over to the right-hand side. In the end, Causey just keeping the ball in hand. And again, just using that skinny side. Making a few extra metres. And I think now they'll look to swing it out to the left. Siani again, he plays it out the back. Now they come out with McHugh. McHugh looking to put some shape on on the left. 
Stop short, and this is the last. Again, they come to the skinny side. McHugh keeps it in hand, looks to get the offload away, but it's into the hands of a Hares Finch player. Yeah, well defended there by Hares Finch. Oral asked a number of questions, didn't he? Putting the ball through both halfbacks' hands on a number of occasions there. The little delayed pass from McHugh. Well, Hares Finch just slammed the door shut on that, and they look to clear their lines. Well, as we mentioned, That's the first 10 carries. minutes of this second half being played at 12 men aside after a little bit of after another error though but the error comes in I said it was important that Hayes Finch started this half well and two errors inside the opening two yardage sets with four minutes on the clock it's and the interestingly end. Kyle just looking at the two sets of teams if you look at the body language Oral definitely with their tails up Hayes Finch already a lot of a lot of blowing a lot of hands on heads and they've got more defending to do here. 20 metres out from their own line. Siani rolls forward once more. Little pop pass there. Again, the Hairsfinch defence doing a reasonable job of just slowing things down. But they come out to the right-hand side. McLaughlin. Look at the depth here. Stop short. But, yeah, again, look at the depth. Almost 20 metres worth of depth. If you look at where... Burns is started off. In the end, they go back inside to Siani. It takes a few defenders to wrestle him to the ground. So under the sticks to come out to the right-hand side. There's numbers here if they use them. They choose to go back inside. They could be through here. Oh, he's over as and well. I think he's muscled his way over. Adam Ball been very, very lively in this half. Over 85 minutes gone, he's had a number of carries and it's just a little switch back inside. He keeps himself alive. And he's got some work to do there, Lewis, and he manages to get the ball down to the delight of those oral spectators just behind the posts. And poor defence, wasn't it? You felt that there wasn't really a lot happening. He somehow manages to get the ball down. Yeah, it looks for all the world here like they're shifting out to the right-hand side, but it's just that little drop-off. And ball, as you say, plenty of work to do. And he does get the there, ball down. Yeah. It's just a second where you thought maybe the defence had done enough. Well, it's Causey. They fancied this switch play, haven't they, a number of times. And I think it's Ellis, the 18-year-old, who just keeps himself alive. Ball's there as well. And that's a good finish. You know, there's three bodies there. He shouldn't really be able to get that down. He has no right, but that's just sheer will and want. And it's a huge, huge score in the context of this game. It'll take us almost guaranteed to 18-0 as Causey just lifts it over and converts that. Well, well, he missed, missed it. it. Oh, he's missed it. Just... <laughs> well, Kyle Amor with well, the first the commentator's curse yeah. of the season. Well, it was the easiest kick out of the three, <laughs> wasn't it? Well, interestingly as well, that's the third kicker that they've had in the three tries that they've scored. So, obviously, in pre-season, there's been a little bit of uh, yeah. debate about who's going to get the kicking duties this time around. But, look, I don't think it was so much oral creating that try I think more Hayes Finch's lack of respect for the ball coming out of yards those couple of errors I think they've almost gifted Oral that try so Hayes Finch with it all to do in this second half as they get us back underway McHugh safely underneath it he's provided some good impact off the bench ball well, four points worth of impact. Buffer in that scoreline for Oral. Siani, he's been so impressive, hasn't he? Yeah, he's just... This he, afternoon. He is the, he's the pat leader, without doubt. A big man. They're the ones you look to to roll you forward in tough periods of the game, and he hasn't had a minute. 47 minutes in, and he's still carrying the ball hard, straight and direct. And you suspect, as you mentioned earlier, looking at the benches, that he's still going to be there doing that. After 80 minutes of this game, so valuable when you've got a middle that can provide you with that kind of a stint. And Oral now bring it over to the left-hand side. McHugh burns into the line. This time he's he's dealt with. Hairswitch defence does well to force him back onto his back as well. So it's a slow play of the ball, and this is the last tackle. Causey put the ball up into the air, spinning around, taking in the end fairly routinely and there's Finch no That's a if decent. it's going to happen for them in this game it needs to start happening now well they need to hold the ball for one 
you know, this is the first time. We're almost eight minutes into this second half, and if they can get through this set, it'll be the first time they've completed it. Oh, it looks like another one there, perhaps. They get away with that one. The referee lets it go. It's a short side play from Hayes Finch. Kelly Duffy. Some decent metres made as well, so they've got all of the field to play with over to this right. Darren Wilson making the carry and playing the ball. So now again they'll hit this right-hand side. Looking to bring more players into the mix with the offloads. And this is better from Hayes Finch, just keeping the ball alive, playing a bit of second phase. So Kelly Duffy will play the ball, Lynch Zero. is an acting half. Six and again a repeat set. So now they come over to the right. And a big opportunity for Hayes Finch to get themselves on the board in this game. Norton cuts short, just a few metres away. And they could be in here, just been held oh, up. I thought he was just going to get the arm free. Desperate defence there, had to be as well. Darren Wilson, the man who was almost through. Flat, flat. Now they come over to the left. Could be numbers here if they can get the ball away. Oral's defence does well. It's good for edge defence again for Oral's being exceptional this afternoon. They keep themselves in the field of play. That pass is slightly behind the halfback. This is the last, so Hayes Finch with one more opportunity in this field possession, in this set, to get some points on the board. Kelly brings us out to the left, he hits the ground, it's still the last, still the last, and he could be in in the corner here, the referee's yeah. just having a chat with his touch judges, he gives the try, and it is Danny Large who's gone over in the corner, and Hayes Finch have a foothold in this game. Yeah, Danny Large, the try scorer number two, just gets over and it was almost the last, that play on the last, it was almost made up. They try a little inside ball, the skill wasn't on, and the bounce of the ball favours Hayes Finch, and they managed to find a cut-out ball there to Large, who squeezes over in the corner. He has a little bit of work to do, but manages to dot the ball down. We just see this play unfold here. It's a no-look pass, trying to find the loose forward there, but he just picks it up and throws that ball Ainsworth to his winger. Danny Large just squeezes over in the corner. 16-4 with a kick to come. He just tries to find that inside ball, trying to find Danny Lynch, but the bounce favours up into Ainsworth's arms. And Large, he just manages to squeeze over again. And not a simple finish either. No, he had certainly to do. not. Stepped in just off the sideline to get himself over. You know, I was speaking to the coach, Andy Murray, during the week, and he told me Danny Large, a 36-year-old, only decided to start playing this game late into his 30s. As Ainsworth kick doesn't find the middle of the hitches. You just see, they're just trying to, this little no up pass. It bounces up into Ainsworth, finds Large, who steps off his left foot, has a bit of work to do. There's a bit of pressure on McLaughlin, trying to hold him up. You just see, the pitcher's show there, the ball's down. And it gives Hayes Finch a small lifeline here, doesn't it? Just something to work with, isn't it? Points on the board, a confidence booster, if anything. Both teams now back to their full complement. After the two sim biddings expire. So we're 13 aside again. Oral with a 16 point to four lead. But Hayes Finch just with a little bit of wind in their sails as we get back underway. Taken cleanly by Goodwin, who's just returned from the sim bin. Strong carry early on in the set, but the Oral defence does well. Again, just trying to slow that tackle down as much as they can. And they've Another forced an error. error. Another one. And just after scoring, Mayers Finch commit the cardinal sin. Come up with an error. And Oral with an opportunity to undo all of that good work. Well, they're not learning, are they? You know, when they keep hold of the ball, they put themselves in a field position, opportunities to... It's just that messy play, the ball yeah, again, isn't it? We've Kelly seen Duffy it as well. Times. I don't know if it's the way he's picking up the ball or whether there's been a number of times where it looks like he's knocked on and the referee's sort of not seen it or... You know, but again, it's well, just another it's, error. I think it's more around the play the ball, isn't it, with the referees seeing these things. It is obviously something that he's come into this game looking for. The referees every season, of course, receive their direction on, the, uh, yeah, on the, what we want to see, you know, what they're being told to see uh, and cut out of the game. 
It's just such an easy fix. Just play the ball. It frankly. is. It is. Look, you're not gonna, you know, that half a second extra, particularly where you are in the field. I can imagine, you know, in good ball in these sorts of positions, a quick play of the ball is gold. As Burns, oh, there's another error there on this left-hand side. Yeah. As Burns, I think it was McLaughlin. Oral just coughing up possession. Some good defence in there, though. Good win. Shrugging off the tackles, playing the ball. There's Finch looking to come away from their own line. And Oral's defence looking really up for this. They know a few big defensive sets in this second half. And they will be in to the second round of the Betfred Challenge Cup to take on York Acorn. That is the prize for whoever wins this afternoon. A home tie as well. So plenty to play for as Hares Finch continue to make reasonable progress up the field. Now the kick goes in, looking to turn the back three around. I'll tell you what, it's not a bad effort at all. He's done well in the end. Look at the chase here. It's a really good chase. Brilliant, brilliant chase really from Matty Ross. Now those sorts of actions, they can help flip a game on its head. Just lifts the teammate around you. Teammates around oh, you. That's not what's wanted either. That to penalty for another tip tackle. After all of that good work from Ross, let down by his teammates a little bit there. And Oral will happily take their time. You know, somebody out there in a Hairs Finch shirt needs to understand what's needed in this game. You know, the bit that the down 16-4. They've not really had much field position. When they have had it, they've scored in this second half. There's got to be someone out there who needs to get around his troops and, and almost dictate and tell them exactly what's needed. Because at the moment, they're just not getting it quite right. You see Arnie just rolls forward, gets his side another 10 metres, down and up, trying to find a play of the ball. And Oral, once more, just roll forward. That's good contact again. I can't think of many times this afternoon when Siani hasn't found his front after one of those lung-busting runs that he keeps oh, coming up with. The top there. And Oral, as we've seen throughout the game, not afraid to, to play to the edges, not afraid to use the space. Well, the, you know, the, the, the longer this goes on, oh, the more confidence he'll get. And it's Too a, big, says the referee. A high shot. It's Alan, Adam Ball again, the recipient of the high tackle. Yeah, he just looks a little bit ginger as he gets up. Brad Davis, ex-witness ex -witness yeah. academy fella, just lands one on ball. And the kick's going to be 40 metres out. I think they'll opt to touch here. I think it's a bit too far out to take the conversion. No real point in doing so, just a 12-point advantage either. So they will kick to the corner. And an opportunity then for Oral to turn the screw. And put themselves in a very commanding position in this game. Keep it tight up the middle for now. Just to the left-hand side of the sticks. Options left and right. And again, Kyle, plenty of depth on show. They come out to the left. There's Finch defences up. Cuts them short on the 10-metre line. Now they look to the right. Will they look to use some of this depth and space? They will. There's an opportunity here if he can get away. Just about dragged down. But Oral knocking on the door. Here's Finch living dangerously. Siani again with that inside ball. We've seen that a few times this afternoon. He's playing like a halfback. He's got it all, hasn't he, the big man? <laughs> really, really impressive. Can his team keep things moving and get themselves four more points on the board really good defensive attitude from Hares Finch this is the last so just one more for them to defend it comes to the skinny side the kick is stabbed through Goodwin's going to look to just usher out into, into the in goal yeah smart player there from Nathan Goodwin just knew that the kick was just a fraction too long let it go over the dead ball line and start a seven tackle set through the middle of the field Met by Siani and company once more. So has Finch survive. A pretty 
Oh, it's penalty given away. on the line, and they've got a penalty here. So look, an opportunity to get themselves downfield. It didn't look like it was ripped. It looked like one of them that just came out in contact, but they get away with it, Hayes Finch, and perhaps they needed that as we enter the final quarter almost into this game. A 12-point lead here in the Betfred Round 1 Challenge Cup clash between Oral and Hayes Finch. Well, as we've mentioned, we are pretty much stood. Oh. Oh. An error again. from the penalty for Hesvich. Just another yardage error from them. They've killed themselves this second half, but, you know, credit Oral. They've just kept their intensity up, and perhaps that's what it is. Just the... Well, I'm not even going to say a lack in fitness at all. It's just a lack in concentration. The cold drop from Jordan Morris... Just looks maybe like a little bit of panic, doesn't it, at this stage? And know they're chasing the game, Hayes Finch. I was just about to say before that error that we are essentially stood in the oral dugout. The message there was to get to them, get them here with the line speed. They did exactly that. I know this sounds a bit... Given how this second half's panning out, if Hayes Finch could somehow manage just to find a converted try in there, well, it's all on, isn't it? Yeah. You know, they're not out of this game and they have to keep believing in that. And I think Oral, the whole second half has been played with our heads turned to the left as you see the pitches, given the dominance that they've had in the second half, the home side. So 20 minutes or so left in this game for us to settle the winner at the moment. It is Oral St James. It looked like they are heading through to the second round of the Betfred Challenge Cup, as Kyle said. 12 points. Tored off down in back play from that carry. And they're rolling forward once more. Six again as well. And Siani just set, lay in the middle of the field, giving them options left and right. They come to the right. McHugh. McHugh takes it up to the line, just a little goose step. Doesn't make any inroads with it, so here's Finch able to just control that play, the ball a little bit. And Oral pretty much starting from a standing start there. Whittle takes it in, makes some good metres. He's just getting up a little bit slowly again. Siani, again, that hybrid halfback role that he seems to be playing again. Well, he's got his hands all over everything this second half. If he's not carrying the ball, he's introducing other people onto it. It was Burns who was cut short on that left-hand side. Now they look to the right again, Siani. <laughs> there must be two of him. Now they come over, oh. a big arching ball. Oh, yeah, well met there by Hayes Finch. A little bit killed. telegraphed, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We tried to go for the worldie over the top and give it to Lewis Round, but he was met there by a hard right shoulder from Neil Allen. But that's fine for Oral. They're OK turning the ball over two metres infield and ten away from their own line. They'll, ha they'll happily do that all, way, all the rest of this game. Yeah, a lot of ground to cover for the away side. Chasing the game, of course. Sam Burns down as well as round, receiving treatment. Christine there, I think it is. Former teammate of mine, Wakefield. come back to the amateur club where he started you know this Oral's team they have, they're have. they so proud of having so many of their players from this area from this community really pride themselves on that, I've got great links with the school St Peter's, Oral St Peter's there a lot of the, a lot of these teammates have grown up together, gone to that school together, played at this club for a number of years right throughout the junior system and it's something that the club are very very proud of you know, perhaps they can go and look to get players and attract players from other other clubs in the NCL, but they pride themselves on just bringing their own through. And you know, they've gone on to produce some fantastic players, Johnny Lomax, some guy called Kevin Brown as well. Never heard of him. <laughs> He's here somewhere, Kev. He's not no, going he to see be. us. He will be. No, Kev's another one of them. He's coaching at this club now and uh, coaching in the youth section. So it's great to see these players back involved where it all started and bringing on the next the next generation of this great game that we all love. Well, slightly concerning look. 
He's Lewis round, being helped off. For Oral. Hope that's nothing too serious, although the, uh, <laughs> the fireman's carry approach suggests that maybe he's not too solid on his feet as Hares Finch looked to get us back underway. Well, 17 to go on our clock. 12 point ball game. And what a Hares Finch got. Oh, they've got another well, error. An that's error. what they've got. And yeah. that puts them in a real tricky position here. Oral with a full set up their sleeve, options left and right. They're going to pay the price here, Lewis. Might not oh. meet the full set, that was an absolute rocket of a pass. Needed to be softer, that ball, and they were in again. Not what he wanted at all, so here's Finch. Just able to claw a few metres back there. McLaughlin bringing it into the line. This is the chance, really, for Oral. They've got to nail this set. McHugh gets taken down. They're about 10 metres away. So they come over to the left edge. Burns again, carrying it into the line. Stopped short. Slowed down as well, which is exactly what Hairswitch will want. Oral from a standing start. McHugh sprays it out to the right. Siani just puts it under his jumper and goes. And he's almost oh. in. Thought about the offload for a split second. Decided to keep it in hand. This is the last, so one more opportunity. McHugh coming around the ruck again, gets the offload away. Nice play on, six more to go. It's going to be a repeat set. I'm going to come back for the scrum, I think, because it was all a bit of a mess. But it will be oral ball and another opportunity for them to stretch his lead out. Yeah, Jack McHugh just flashing it back across the ruck, just double pumping the ball. He throws a little offload away from that legs tackle. And it hits the, I think it's Niall uh, Allen's hand. It has to be as well, because if he doesn't get a hand to that, well, there's two men on this far, this left-hand side of the field who are walking. Well, last-ditch player there, just to keep Hayes Finch in this game ever so slightly. But the sheer weight of possession. You'd have to imagine that Oral, at some stage, have to score here. They've had a number of sets down on this line. And apart from Adam Ball's try, back on the inside... They haven't been able to get over. So they come out to the right. There are numbers there. Just, Just loses his footing. And again, it's a slow play, the ball. As a lot of this attacking spell has been for Oral. Maybe just starting to see that fitness element settling in. A bit of a cramp, maybe, here. Can't tell who it is that's down. It's Nathan Ellis. The youngster. His brother played here just before turning pro and he's found himself taking his brother's position having moved on to the pro game. He's had a decent afternoon, to be fair, the youngster. Still a teenager, 18-year-old. Touch of cramp there. Well, as we've mentioned a few times, it is, of course, the first game of the season. It's not warm either here. I'm sure those muscles are just... A little bit tighter than they will be in uh, June or July, perhaps. I'm sure he'll be all right to carry on. Just gets himself back to his feet. He's just still not 100% happy with it, is he? No, he's not. We knew that. We knew that fitness and injuries, especially when you yeah, look at the benches, course. will come into play. Absolutely. There's not a you huge know, amount of... Uh, the, the grounds are a bit heavier at this point, you know, there's a, like you said, there's not that, uh, you can see there, there the, go, coach, the universal sign language yeah, for substitution, that, please. That, that's his, his afternoon done, but with 14 on the clock, I think he's had a decent game as the right edge bat rower. But it looks like Nathan it's Adam Alice. Bolt, who's coming back into the freight. For that's Oral, a decent replacement to bring back on and had a very good afternoon himself. Yeah, I think the bench is. I was a bit concerned at her eyebrow raised over the lack of size in that in that bench, that interchange bench for they've Oral. Managed but it they, really but well, they've been, they? they've been exceptional, really. So we're back underway. McHugh drops the ball off. Hairs finishes defence Ooh. does well, just about managing to bring them in. Them McHugh again looks to the inside. A number of times this afternoon, they've looked to that little inside switch. It has worked for them. It didn't on that occasion, but they've still got opportunities. Yeah, good this is the last. All the numbers stacked out to the left, and that's the way they come. If Hugh keeps ball in hand. Now the kick comes in, just stabbed through. 
and almost, Oof. almost did enough. Oof. Oof. Callum just Taylor just tipped on. Just the left hand of his just needed to be a few inches longer. It just bounces off. It's a gorgeous little kick through there. Perfect weight. But just Callum Taylor, he just can't take it in. Conscious of that sideline, trying to keep in the field of play. Just spills it at the very, very end of it. It is. But again, though, Lewis, the look when they turn the ball over, they turn, they're asking Hairsfin to roll forward. They've only completed one set in this second half. And that's why the sheer dominance in field position and in territory tells you everything that you need to know in this second half. We enter the last 12 minutes. It does all seem to be happening in this second half in the corner of the ground where we have a, a bit of a restricted yeah. view. I just thought for a second there that maybe he'd done enough to reel it in, but unable to bring it in. And Hairs Finch with an opportunity now. It's getting to that first stage. First opportunity for a while where it feels yeah. like they've had the ball, Carl. Yeah, it's getting to that stage where Hairs Finch needs to come up with something. I don't think it's in this set. I think a long kick down and a defensive mindset, and then get after it the next set. Yeah, They're looking to move the ball. Still have time. They do now look to the edges. And this is the last tackle here as no, they cross no. over right in front of us on the halfway line. There's the ball. Kick goes up into the air. Needed a bit more on that. There's a Lynch chance. Put it up. They have come back with it. In the end, Oral defence is there. Well, It'll the kick, be a turnover. Yeah, I just felt the kick Lewis needed another 10, 15 metres on it. But nobody home at the back, not brave enough to take the ball in. You can see there Burns and Gallagher. Bit of confusion between them two, and it ends up in the arms of Hayes Finch. But it's here now. This is the moment, this is the period of time where they need to up it now here defensively if they're going to get an opportunity to have a crack at Oral's line. Well, it's the first time, it feels like, for most of the second half, to be honest, but it is the first time probably since Hayes Finch scored their try well, they've had that one we've set. been looking to yeah. the right hand side. They've had one set, haven't they, in the second half, and they've came up with points. So that's the message for them. But it starts with your defence here, the Siani doing what he's been doing all afternoon and just taking that ball up, saying, come with me. And when you look at this half compared to the first, the difference does seem to be Oral are the team that's managed to cut out the errors. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you know, Hayes Finch have absolutely crucified themselves in terms of errors and particularly where they've made those errors as well. There's a long kick there from well, Kelk. Does well. Gets himself underneath it. Oh, good contact there. Well, it's a good kick, Chase. Yeah. This is the time now where they just need to keep rolling forward. Half a break here. Well, Darren Wilson, that was, just punching his way through the line. It's not the quickest play of the ball, and there's another error from Hayes Finch. And that pretty much yeah. sums their afternoon up, doesn't yeah, it, Carl? So, yeah, yeah, they've only themselves to blame in this. Again, you know... And they've jumped the gun there. They get away with the offside. Look who's here again. And he's Ciani still shrugging players forward. off. They've been so impressed with him. Jack McHugh as well. He's been dominant. But he's but given a away a penalty, penalty with the ball in hand. Well, that is a cardinal sin. Well, it is and if he go on to score. To keep his head a little bit here. Because the job for Oral is pretty simple. It's just game management. And it'll be a little bit harder if they did anything silly and went down to 12 men again. Well, I make it. There's 10 sets left in this game how many the guys in yellow and black have will be down to what they do with this ball in the next in the next couple of plays well not a huge amount of distance on the kick but nevertheless an opportunity for Hayes Finch to try and get some field position and have a crack at the line <laughs> and both middles flying up from Oral Tom Whittle Siani and Whittle together not something you'd particularly enjoy looking up and seeing. No, no. Well, Whittle put that monster shot on early doors, didn't he? He's just come up with another. And again, good line speed. It's Norton. He's been... Oh, he's lost the ball there. There's the strip, the one-on-one. -on -one. And it's all just flowing Oral's way it's now, isn't it? Error, isn't it? You know, it's as simple as that. You can call it a, a piece of play or a smart piece of play for Morrill, but it, it, it's a lack of concentration. They're not holding on to the ball, not recognising that's coming. As now they've started to look for contact, but it's too little too late. You see their third man coming in. Whilst it looks like you care, the, the reality is 72 minutes in and you decide to start putting yourself about, it's too late. Whittle 
making the carry again. Plenty of attention, but deals with it well, and it just feels like those key players, Rorrell now, are stepping up at the right time. Siani and Whittle. Here he is again. Oh, that's a crazy carry. After a 73-minute 73, 73 stint, to still be doing that is a remarkable carry. His leg speed's still the same. Doesn't look like a tired carry, does it? McHugh goes to the line there, met by Danny Lynch. Last tackle, 35 metres out. We'll just roll this down the side, surely. Yeah, it's a smart little kick, considering where we are in the game. Goodwin deals with it well. well he does with it really well. He's got a huge amount of work to do. Opens himself up, gets to the middle of the field. Smart play from the fullback there. Just gives his side a couple of options coming out of yardage. And again, there's Finch. Another error. Come up with an error. And there could be an opportunity here for Oral to kill the game off, to keep this alive. Good tackle in the end coming in. Norton. From Norton. On Gallagher. But a perfect platform for the home side. Siani. Doing the simple thing, just keeping it in the middle. Options to the left. Looking to use those numbers. They've got a three on three in the end. They keep the ball in hand. And just settle things. McHugh again. He's had his mitts all over this second half, you. Yeah, he's just been just patient, hasn't he? There's another lift here. Intelligence, game management, just getting Oral through this. Yeah. It's not been easy for them. They've been under some pretty tough examination at times. McHugh again. They miss out. Little drop-off ball, they and they're in! There it is, there's the game. And with that, you would think Oral have booked their passage into the second round of the Betfred. Challenge Cup. Really intelligent play on the right hand side from McHugh. Yeah. And it, in the end, it was just an overload, wasn't it? Yeah, what I liked about that play is the number of times we've seen in the second half, Oral have tried to go around them, but this time they do a lovely short ball through McHugh, hits that second rower on a hard line, just knocks the front door down and scores a try that kills this game off. 20 points to four, five minutes left, but just watch McHugh there. He shapes up to go out the back, short ball. Brilliant stuff. Sends him over for a lovely try. And that's the game. Look what it means as well. They know that's the one. They know that's the try. I think it's Sean Liam. Finlow who's gone over. I think it's Liam McLaughlin. Wearing the number three on his back. And Oral St. James now. Surely can enjoy the last five minutes of this cup tie. Well, they've enjoyed the last 40, to be honest. They've not really had to exert themselves too much defensively. Again, the number of errors. You know, I, I, I make it that they've only completed two sets in that whole second half of the visitors, and it's not good enough at any level of rugby you play. You're never going to win a contest if you, can, if you can't keep hold of the ball. It's as simple as that. But Oral, they've had to wait patiently. I think the good ball attack could have been slightly better given the amount that they've had. But, you know, at the end of the day, they've just stuck patient, waited for their opportunity. And when it came, they've been able to ice those. Not all of them. As the kick is missed once more. Just so 20 points out. to four. But academic, really. Unless there's Finch have got the mother of all comebacks in their back pocket, but... There just surely isn't enough time now. and no. You can't fault them for their application in this game, their attitude towards it. They've worked hard, but ultimately, Carl, errors. Yeah, errors as well. But just that try there, smart play there from Hugh. He just puts the sheer size and the frame of Liam McLaughlin on Matty Ross. A sheer mismatch in size. Ross can't hold on. He finds the floor, but gets bumped off. And McLaughlin scores. He goes for a short kick-off here. That's well really taken. Really well dealt with. How smart's that? Goal That's clever play. From McLaughlin. That shows your head's in the game. They could be guilty of letting that go over the sideline, but a brilliant play from McLaughlin there. Kyle, it's getting to that time in the afternoon. I'm going to ask you to think about your bet Fred player of the match. I have an inkling. I know where you're going to go with it. I'll give you a couple more tackles to just make your mind up. As Whittle takes us up over halfway. It's a slow play, the ball. A few tired legs out there now. 
Well, they just know the game's done now. They just run into the dying embers of it. Just roll forward, get to a kick. Another def set defensively, maybe two at best, and, and the game's theirs. McHugh, chip over the top. And a taken out of the ball. Shot. Again, discipline. And there's a little slap uh -oh. there from Norton on McHugh. And really, apart from that spell at the end of the second half, it's the first time in a game that it's really balled over. The referee just with a little bit of sorting out to do. Cheeky little kick over the top there. McHugh feels he's already, sorry, Norton feels he's already committed, but just watch the right hand here. A little slap. Yeah. Both of There's them have to be it, fair. And they're still working it out between them on the field. So we'll take this opportunity, Kyle. To come to you and get your bet friend yeah. player of the match. Well, look, I think there's been some exceptional performances from particularly from this oral side. Sam Burns, I think he's had an exceptional game. Jack McHugh as well. You know, you mentioned the composure, the control that he's had and, and the ability to organise. But look, I'm going to be slightly biased here and I'm going to go with the number 10, Kai Siani. I think the importance of his job heading into this game, knowing that there's no recognised forward on the bench and particularly what he's been able to do and continue to do throughout this contest has been incredible to watch. So the, the Betfred player of the match is the number 10, Kai Siani. Prop forward gives prop forward man of the match. Shock. There you go. Some things never change, do they? It's a new season. <laughs> but come on, he's played 80 minutes in this. He's been outstanding. He's and there's been a outstanding. Card. His energy, his, his, his craft, Martin Norton. the way he's carried the ball. He's also had some nice little subtle passes as well in there, providing a link, not just a ball-carrying threat as well. I think he's been incredible this afternoon. And there's another yellow card for Norton, and, you know, that probably sums up their afternoon. Poor discipline with and without the ball. And second best. So there's Finch. We'll end their Betfred Challenge Cup debut down to 12 men. They've given it a fair old crack this afternoon, but not to be. And an opportunity for Oral to put the ball into touch. Get a few more metres and have one more crack at this Hairs Finch line. And you can just tell, can't you, the intensity in this game has dropped a little bit. Both sets of players know. But with a man advantage, Oral will be eyeing up another opportunity to score here. Whittle will take the carry. Manages to get his nose through the line, find his front. The only thing left is for Siani to crash over here. He's going to have a go. Just about manages to keep oh. the ball in hand. <laughs> I thought he was going to get done it again there, Carl, with the commentator's <laughs> curse. They come out to the left, McHugh. Miss out ball, and in the end, it's intercepted. So, Hairs Finch survive. But as we have been for so much of this second half, we are looking at Hairs Finch yeah. with the ball deep, deep inside their own territory. I just think, Lewis, once again, although the pass wasn't a good one and it ends up in the hands of Hairs Finch, look where they turn the ball over, though. And there's another error here, forcing errors again, asking their opposition to come out in ugly parts of the field, putting pressure on them. All game, very much deservedly winners here this afternoon. And they'll face York Air Corps, of course, in the next round. That'll be a more difficult test for them, no doubt about that. But they'll enjoy this one this afternoon. So no rush from either side really, but especially not from Oral for this scrum. We do get back underway. And again, we come over to this left-hand side with Michoud. And another penalty. Yeah, just and taking off the ball, wasn't he? Just starting to unravel a little bit now, isn't it, for Hayes Finch? Just starting to lose their rag a little bit, you sense. Well, it's just frustration really, Lewis, isn't it? They know they've not given their Selves the best account of themselves this afternoon. They've been playing some tremendous rugby over the last few seasons of Hayes Finch, and like I say, they've just come up short here, but it's largely through their own doing, it really is. Yeah, no doubt, better days will come for Hayes Finch in this competition. Division One winners in 2022, second place in the Premier Division last time around. A Barla Cup final in there as well. There's plenty to be optimistic about. But as Burns just gets his offload a little bit wrong, it is Oral. He will take the spoils this afternoon. There it is. There it is. Full time in the first round 
of the Betfred Challenge Cup. Oral St. James 20, Hares Finch 4. And a very, very comprehensive second half performance from the home team gets them over the line, Kyle. Yeah, the blue and gold march on through to round two of the Betfred Challenge Cup. York Air Corner waits. What a decent performance, you know, a, a control performance as well. And, you know, that 40 minutes all belonged to Oral. They'd done enough in the second half to give them a nice little cushion heading into it. It was important that Hayes Finch started well, but, you know, I sound like a broken record, I really do, but the, the number of errors that they did is just absolutely criminal. And uh, you're never going to win any game of rugby league at any level if you're going to produce that. But well done to Worrell. You can only sort of take advantage and play what's in front of you. They give them a lot of opportunities, and in the end, the scoreboard, you know, certainly reflects the game. Well, rugby league's a simple game, Carl, and if you don't have the ball, you're not going to win rugby league matches, are you? Exactly, exactly. You know, and the amount of defending they had to do. Look, at times, I'll credit Hayes Finch, they, they defended some of Oral's attack particularly well. Uh, I think Oral look to sharpen that up as they progress on, not only into this competition, but into the season as well. But, you know, two tries in both halves, really, uh, is it, sort of a, a fair reflection of, of how the game sort of panned out. Well, there's a tale of the tape. Oral's and James, 20 and... Here's Finch for here on the Sportsman. An absolute pleasure to have your company this afternoon. A resounding result in the end for the home side. And we'll cast our minds back to the early exchanges in this game. Well, this is how it, before. Yeah, this is how it all started. It was a good play down this left-hand side of the field. Nathan Ellis there introducing Lee McLaughlin, who I actually thought, I didn't give him a mention, I thought he had a tremendous game as well. Pretty solid out on that right-hand side of the field at the centre roll, but gives the ball back in, inside there. Sam Burns, another one of those players who just sort of lit this game alight this afternoon, and he was here again. The two combined, the halves, McHugh digging right into the line. The pace at which Burns arrives on, gets on the outside of his centre and gives the ball to round there, and that takes the score to 12-0 at the half-time break. The thing with that try, when you look at it from that previous angle, is how long it takes until Burns is even in shot. Exactly. That's how far back he starts from. Yeah, yeah. Well, they had options, didn't they, McHugh? He had options to hit any one of those players, but gives the ball to Burns, who does the rest. And then this, this was a real opportunity towards the end. Just an opportunity there to get the ball over the line. Last desperate defence from Hayes Finch. He'll shut the door ajar, didn't it? But yeah, but a number of errors just led to this. Back on the inside, ball. He just finds a space there. I think I think it was Morris, the halfback. Sorry, Matty Ross just loses his foot, and when the ball comes back alive here, opens the space up for ball, and he just manages to dot that ball down. And then there was a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of fight back as the ball ends up in with Danny Large, who squeezes over in the corner. But then this right at the end, this was the nicest try of the afternoon for me. Just a lovely short pass. A number of times, McHugh had went out the back, out the back. And on that occasion, hits the door, hits the front door, sorry. And Liam McHugh gets the well-deserved try for him this afternoon. The body language of the players in Hayes Finch tells you everything, that that was the nail in the coffin. A short, soft little pass. And he's got plenty of work to do there. The big right hand put down. And that's the try that sends Oral through to the round two Betfred Challenge Cup. And York Acorn away for Oral St. James. After a fantastic afternoon here on the Sportsman, a great occasion, a brilliant crowd, community rugby league alive and well. Oral St. James into the second round of the Betfred Challenge Cup. And we can go pitch side now to hear from the coaches. Well, Kai, first of all, many, many congratulations. You've just put a performance in there, which has got yourself an accolade of winning the Betfred Player of the Match, which coincidentally was voted for by the legendary prop forward, Kyle Amor. Well, it's an honour to be called Man of the Match, and uh, obviously I grew up watching St. Helens, so to get it off him, it's a big reward. Kai, from your point of view, obviously you just put in an 80-minute performance there, which was obviously remarked upon within the commentary team, but uh, that, that was a massive achievement you know from yourself as a prop forward going out there for 80 minutes yeah obviously it's not something I look to strive for every week I just strive to do the best job I can do for my team if that means playing 80 minutes I'll do it if it means playing 40 and having a bit more of the ball it will so I'll just do whatever we can for the win and obviously see you know you don't aim to do 80 minutes week in week out um, but you know in that even in the very last minute there you, you were producing hits as strong and as hard as you were producing in the opening minutes just how, how on earth did you get through that 80 minutes with that 
sort of level of fitness? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I take pride in my fitness, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is, I'm just prepared to do whatever for the team. So I'm prepared to go out, do 18 minutes, whatever it takes to win, whatever it takes for my team to win. Guy, congratulations on going through to the next round. We'll let you get in the sheds to your teammates and bring in your coach, Sean McHugh. Sean, first of all, congratulations on that performance. You must be delighted to get the winning into the next round. Yeah, we're, we're very pleased. I just want to sort of say a big thanks to her stint. Uh, I know you're going to have a chat with them in a minute. Um, it was a, always a tough draw for us when we saw the draw. It was, it was a worrying one. They beat us last year twice, I think. Um, so it, it was always going to be a tough day. And I thought they made a, a, a big occasion of it. So it was two good sides going at it and, and we just got there in the end. So, yeah, we're really pleased and looking forward to the next round. You speak there about Hurst Finch and the occasion. It certainly grabbed the imagination of the public. I mean, the, the, the crowd that was in today, I think they were still queuing up outside the, t the turnstile, so to speak, 10 and 15 minutes into a delayed kickoff. Yeah, and, and that's something that we spoke to the lads about before the game. That it, it's a massive thing for the community of Oral, and 17 of our players today are from the community of Oral. So it gave them an opportunity to show people what they could do. And I believe there was a, a, a really big um, crowd came from Hurst Finch as well because it's only over the road. So it has. It's been a great day. And it's been a great day for our club that we can showcase our facilities. And, and it's been a really good day out for both teams. I know it's the first time Hurst Finch have been in it, but I won't be surprised if they get in it again in, in future years. You know, So really good local derby. And I, I, don't, I don't think we've had many more on here. There's been occasions where we've probably been close, but that's probably up as near as you know the amount of people we we get on here so it's been absolutely fantastic and I want to do thank the people who've come today and obviously thank the people who are watching on Sportsman's um, because quite a few people, older people who, with the weather and stuff can't get here, we've got people living abroad who've not been able to get here so you know it's been great that you yourselves are, are, are publicising it and gives people who have not got the opportunity to get down to watch it anyway as well so it's been great thanks. Well, from our point of view, Sean, obviously we've, we've really enjoyed putting this game on today, but you talked there about the community of Oral. Last season, obviously, you reached the third round of the Challenge Cup. You drew a professional side. Uh, I'm guessing you're hoping certainly to reach at least the third round again. Uh, no. I mean, we've got your kick on down here in the second round. Um, something like three or four divisions above us. Um, so we're under no illusions about that and we're going to take that quite seriously and, and see what we get but I'm sure we'll be heavy underdogs um, so the third round's a really a long way away for us and I've you know, I've just been speaking to the coach of Urs Finch there and it's nice just to play in it and get your occasion but I don't see us being at Wembley you won't be interviewing us at Wembley come July so it's, we, we carry the journey on as long as we can and we, we'll do well against York Acorn but we'll start underdogs and then we'll just see where we go from there Sean, thank you for joining us so quickly after the game. Congratulations once again. Best luck in the next round and for the rest of the season. Thanks very much. Thanks for Sportsman for uh, obviously for putting this on the telly. It means a lot to us. Thanks very much. As we bring in a opposing coach now, Urs Finch, Mark Saunders. Mark, first of all, obviously it was your first appearance in, in the Challenge Cup. Uh, apart from the defeat, just how are you feeling right now? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a fantastic occasion for us, Finch, being being in the Challenge Cup. You know, two years ago, we was in Division 1, and we've had a fantastic couple of seasons. And, you know, first and foremost, I'd just like to thank everyone from us, Finch, who's given us the support this week. It's been a massive occasion, and apologies, we, we just couldn't put a performance in for you. It was just remarked upon there by, by Sean about the travelling fans. You, you brought quite a few with you today. Yeah, to be fair, we're, we're always well supported. It's a really, really good community club. And we're growing all the time. We've got good juniors coming through, so yeah, it's fantastic. And in terms of the game today, just before we let you go, obviously, you know, we've, we've remarked upon the fact that it was your first appearance in the Challenge Cup. Um, maybe, you know, a few nerves and everything else, but a lot of it could have come down to, to, to the errors that you made on, on the paddock over the 80 minutes. Basics, pal. At the end of the day, you can't make as many errors as what we made and turn the ball over as much as what we did. And, one thing we spoke about before the game was that Oral always thrive off teams making errors and, and that's what we did. If you look at the first 20 minutes, I think we should have scored two or three tries but we tried to score off, off a wonder pass instead of just simple hands and, and it cost us because they then just keep going from that and, and they're good at looking up and spotting where the gaps are and, and they take the chances, we didn't. Mark, many thanks for joining us. All the best for the rest of the season and we hope to see you again in the Challenge Cup next season. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully we'll see you again next season. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, there we have it, that key word, errors, that's come up time and time again. 
Kyle, yeah. you can't fault theirs, Finch, for the effort they put into today, but ultimately they'll look back and talk about that word, errors. 100%. You know, look, any, anybody, any player, at any level who takes to the, to, to the field of rugby league, it's a tough sport, but it makes it a whole lot tougher when you don't respect the ball, and I think that's what that's what will upset the players, the coaches as well, that, that, that there's an opportunity here for them to go on that journey that I referenced at the start, but unfortunately they just got it all wrong, particularly the second half. It was a car crash performance from them uh, and ultimately it's one team that deserves to go through and that's the home side. Yeah, very efficient performance in that second half from our old They march on to the second round of the Betfred Challenge Cup. They will face York Acorn here at their home ground. It's been an absolute pleasure, Carl, having you alongside us for this one. Brilliant to be back, brilliant to have the rugby league season back. The Betfred Challenge Cup always produces, even in these early rounds. Get your eyes across our social media in the coming days. We'll confirm what we're doing for round two. But in the meantime, it's been an absolute pleasure. We'll see you soon. That is a remarkable finish. Burke, Burke goes for the corner and Leah Burke's in. And it's Tamsin Renouf. The pass from Harley Dodd. And this could be the first score of the game because London are going to get there and touch down. He's gone for the same ball and he's no. gone. Beautiful. They might score the winner. And North Wales have another. Brings it up to the line, drops it off to Hazard who reaches through.